Two related questions about going to heaven. Can non-Catholics go to heaven? And can you go to heaven if you die with mortal sin on your soul? Now, the question of heaven is a mystery. We cannot answer all of it. We can answer what we know. When you say non-Catholics, I am not quite sure what you mean by non-Catholics. There's a broad spectrum because you have Protestants, then you have Muslims, then you have non-believers, okay? Jesus teaches in the Gospel of John that unless one is born of water and of the Holy Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. If you found salvation on that text, then baptism is the primary source of entrance into heaven. But we also know that the church has taught that those who strive and search for truth, who without no fault of theirs have not been exposed to the Christian faith or to baptism, but desire in their hearts, you know, truth and goodness and beauty, somehow that desire can qualify them for heaven. We have to leave that to Jesus. We cannot decide that. But we cannot sit in judgment over anyone who goes to heaven or not go to heaven. We have to let Jesus decide because everyone, even non-believers, belong to Christ. Everyone is implicated in Christ becoming man. The mystery of the incarnation implicates all humanity, not just Christians. Jesus did not become a Christian. He became man, okay? So if anyone can lay any claim to Christ, somehow remotely, he might save them. But the sure way is the way of baptism. That is the way he has appointed for salvation. But the mystery of God's love can stretch and stretch and stretch. That is why no one can sit in judgment over anybody. And our Lord is very clear, but you can't read Jesus and not leave with the understanding that it is possible that some would not make it to heaven. That's very clear. It's not fun. It's not comfortable. It's meant to be kind of a spurring towards greater holiness. Um, but that being said, we don't judge the person, but we do judge the actions. And when the church talks about sins and church talks about mortal sin and what mortal sin can do to the soul, based from our understanding of scripture, based on teachings that were passed on, it's clear that certain actions are not okay, that they have the absolute potential to leave your soul unworthy in some way that perhaps we won't even try to describe. It might not be something we can understand, but in some way that action leaves your soul unworthy for heaven. But we will never go to the point of saying, okay, I know that that person did that action, therefore I know that that person is not, in, we don't go there. But we do absolutely go to the point where we say that action will not get you to heaven, and it might keep you out. And we leave it there. You know, the uh, other dimension to that question is the mystery of hell. Who goes to hell? The church has never said anyone went to hell. The church has always declared people who have arrived in heaven because we see miracles or we have testimonies of what intercession from them can bring to us on earth. But hell must remain a real possibility to anyone who can finally make the choice against love and against God. The church does not abolish hell. The church say, says that hell remains a mystery, but the church has never condemned anyone to hell. But the question is, can anyone, can anyone say no to love? Can anyone in their right minds refuse God's love? Or, let me ask the question in a different way, can God's love fail? Can God's power fail in a soul? There are more questions than answers in regard to hell. <laughs> but so, the church doesn't say anything about it, but hell must remain a possibility. If you live in mortal sin, teaching is that you end up there unless you repent and do penance, but we do not condemn anyone to hell. If I could just say sometimes you're asked, well, what's the worst sin? What's the greatest obstacle? And there are many ways to answer that, but based on what, what Father was just saying, this, that, so that the possibility of saying no to love, I would say the greatest sin could be pride, because pride can certainly be a love for self. 
so much so that you can't say yes to the love for other or even receiving the love from another. So pride, I would certainly encourage all of us to flag it, big red flag, and stay away from it and try to overcome it because that is a large and high potential obstacle to love and therefore to heaven. And we always hear that the famous mantra of the devil was, I will not serve. Pride can't submit and bow its head for the good of another.